design decision making process. And uh, this chapter talks about the differences between decision making as an individual and decision making as a group. You guys remember in your projects, it's not the same as when it is your own personal life, right? Uh, maybe if you decided to do something, you make all the decisions and you're alone. You make your decisions based on your own intuition and your own thinking style. But when you are in a group, in a company, in an organization, you have a strategy, you have a goal, then here we've got a little bit different. So in this chapter, we're talking about how to identify solve problems, uh, uh, problem identification and problem solution. Uh, and uh, you guys remember the differences between program decisions and non-program decisions? A program decision is repetitive and it is well defined. Then these types of problems, you know how to solve them and you know the problems that normally comes along with them. Therefore, because they're repetitive, they're well defined. You know the problem when it appears and then you normally the solutions will be obvious. Now if it's a non-program decision, that's when you need, when it's a novel and poorly defined problem. Here you need to have very good problem solving skills. And here we're going to talk about, uh, you know, types of issues that, uh, you know, in the business environment that, you know, uh, part of this uh, non-program decision making. Number one, you have a new strategy, completely new. So it's a non-program decision. You need to re-engineer your company. Remember when we talked about companies when they start to fail, you need to re-engineer at some point of time. So this re-engineering needs also another type of, you know, uh, decision making skills. Sometimes you want to restructure. You want to make a department bigger or a smaller. Maybe you want to uh, completely remove a department. Mergers and acquisitions is when you have two companies and now they join together. So now you have a lot of type of problems. So how we uh, solve these problems. Uh, downsizing. If you want to get rid of a number of pure people. Is it easy? Is it difficult? Uh, you have some uh, people, they will lose their jobs. You want to help them get to another job. Uh, you have people now, they have more work or they have new tasks that they never had. So now we need to solve these issues. And you also have a new market or product uh, deployment or development. Then you need to uh, be ready to solve these problems. Um, now, if we talk about individual decision making, we've got two types of decision making. Uh, one decision making is when it is rational approach. That's when you identify methods for how managers should make decisions. So this is more rational. Bounded rationality perspective is how decisions are made under severe time and resource constraints. You guys remember when you want to make a decision, you want to take the best decision. But the fact is you cannot always uh, make the best decisions because you don't have en enough time and you don't have enough resources. You see, maybe you guys remember in your projects, there are situations where you said, okay, let's do it this easy way. Because, you know, there's limited time to think about what's the best way to do it. Or maybe you don't have all the resources you need, okay? You just pick someone to be the judge instead of you bring an expert judge. Now, here are the steps for the national approach. The rational approach, you start with a problem identification and then you get problem solution. This question will be on your exam. Number one, these eight steps. Number one, you monitor decision environment. You define the decision problem. You specify decision objectives. And then you diagnose the problem, okay? So here, we're trying to identify the problem. Do you guys remember, you know, if you get the problem, you define it well, that's half the solution. If you don't have clear identification of what is the real problem, then it is going to be difficult for you to get the right solution. Once you identify the problem, you start to develop alternative solutions. What are my options? You evaluate them, choose the best, you do it. Okay? Now, the bounded rationality perspective, there is limited on how the rational managers can be, time and resources constraints, more in non program decisions. You have constraints and trade-offs. Do you guys know what are constraints? You know, you want to make the decision, let's say, uh, and, uh, but at the same time, you have some constraints. You don't have money, you don't have time. You don't have the resources, you don't have human resources. So now you need to trade off. Okay, instead of we get this best, maybe we can get this alternative. Instead of we buy, maybe we rent. Instead of we get the best judge, let's get, train someone to be the judge. Uh, we can't get, uh, then we let's trade it off with 
Do you see? So here we start to have trade-offs. And the role of intuition becomes very important. People who are experienced, they judgments more than logic. Okay? So sometimes you make the judgment. I want this person because, you know, this person, I have that feeling or intuition or gut will do the best results. And then in this uh, slide, it talks about the strengths and trade-off during a non-program decision making. You have to trade off. You have bounded rationality. You have limited time and information. Do you guys know the word trade-off? Trade-off means that you have to submit or accept something less for the exchange of some, of some other benefit. Um, you know, you need to trade off between, uh, okay, maybe the best is to get uh, a table tennis. Okay, maybe the best is to buy it. But you don't have the money to buy it. So, okay, we will accept. We will not buy it. We will rent it. That's a trade off. Okay, so you get the product for a shorter period of time in exchange for not having to pay the full price of this. Do you see? So that's an acceptable trade off. And uh, let's say if you're a CAC bank and uh, you want to make decision, let's say uh, we want to. Uh, get uh, uh, 100 customers. Uh, we can, uh, you know, maybe call all of these people and invite them over. And that's going to be very expensive. So maybe we trade it off. And instead of that, let's maybe just send them SMS. Hmm, is that better trade off? Then you try to weigh the cost and the benefits. Okay, so how much you save by sending them SMS? How much you have to pay for the SMS? Will they actually get the message? How many people will not get the message right? And then you do trade off. The solutions? What? Like solutions? Alternative solutions? Uh, you trade off, let's see, here we have a bounded rationality. You have limited time, limited information resources to deal with complex, multi dimensional issues. You also have organizational constraints. Let's say the level of the decision, the agreement, the shape, shared perspective the cooper uh, cooperation, the support, the, cor the corporate culture, the structure, the ethical values. So all of these are constraints. Do you guys understand what we mean by constraints? Let's say if you're the marketing manager, your level is not on the top. Uh, number of people agree with you is few or high. Uh, how many people agree with your idea? Let's say you decided, okay, we will do this marketing campaign, but we will do it on Facebook. How many people will agree? How many people share that this is a good uh, strategy? Uh, how many people will cooperate with you? How many people will actually support you? Uh, the level of culture. Does our culture allow for Facebook? Or our culture, we don't, we don't know what is Facebook. Um, what type of structure we have? Maybe in our company, when it comes to, uh, we have another department's public relations that's more powerful than us. And maybe they will say, stop. Uh, maybe ethical values. Some people say, no, uh, you know, that's a waste of time. We don't want to be associated with Facebook. We only want to be associated with LinkedIn. You see? So all of these, they become a constraints for you to make the decision to advertise on social media or no. Okay? Limited time. You know, how fast can I uh, implement it on uh, Facebook advertising? Uh, how much information do I need? Uh, do I have all the resources? Uh, this is, is it a complex decision? I need to advertise, I need to agree, I need to get people, I need to get a manager, I need to. So now, uh, these are trade-offs, and you look at the personal also constraints. People desire for prestige, you see? Uh, some people want to prove successful. Personal decision style. So my, if I'm the marketing manager here, I want to decide, uh, keep my prestige. Uh, have my uh, position, desire to satisfy my emotional needs, uh, which is, let's say, success or, you know, become very uh, uh, well-known. Coping with the pressure, you need to get the results, you need to get this number of customers. Or, and then you maintain your self-concept, this is who I am. So all of these trade-offs, to make their decision, you search for a quality decision alternative. So based on all of these constraints, organizational constraints, personal constraints, I decide I will do it, or maybe I will not do it. Okay. 
Management science approach. The management science approach is when you use statistics to identify relevant variables, no human elements, very successful for military problems. It's a good tool for decisions where variables can be identified and measured. And it's the drawback of management science is that quantitative data are not very rich and lack tacit knowledge. Are you guys okay with these? Which one of these? Do you guys remember tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge? Now, management science is, remember your quantitative class? That's management science. Basically there, you use statistics, you use numbers. Remember the problems, how many people did not take the quantitative class? Okay, in the quantitative class they tell you this problem. They tell you we have Sana'a, Adan, Ta'iz, and Hudaydin. These are like four cities. And then in the city number one, they have this much inventory. They have 100 inventory. And they have 300 demands. In Ta'iz, they have 200 inventory and 200 uh, demand. In Adan, they have uh, you know, 500 inventory and 2,000 demand. In Sana'a, they have 5,000 inventory and 10,000 demand. So now, what is the best solution to redistribute our inventory to meet all of the demands? And then you make this quantitative. You get statistics, you get the numbers, you get all the variables. There is no human element. No one makes the decision. Only the numbers make the decision. It's a good decision tool where the variables can be identified and measured. We know the variables. Demand in Sana'a, supply in Sana'a, in Adan, in Ta'iz, in Hudayd. And then uh, we can measure them. And now we make the decision. And the calculation will tell you, uh, you need to move 200 units from Sana'a to Aden. Uh, you need to move 300 units from Aden to Ta'iz to uh, Mkalla. Because this is going to give us the best solution. So the problem is clear. We measure it statistically. We use management science. We get the results. Got it, what's management science? One plus one equals two. The problem with this is that quantitative data sometimes not very rich, and they don't have the tacit knowledge. What we mean by not rich is that you did not take into consideration maybe in Aden, maybe there is a political problem that's going to make it difficult to move the stuff from Aden to Taz. Therefore, we can't do the suggested management science. We need to get the stats, the knowledge, information that is not written, you see, and make it part of the, rule, the decision science. Are you guys okay with this? Do you understand or no? Okay. Now, here we have the Karanji model. The Karanji model says, you have uncertainty, information limited managers have many constraints. We also have another conflict. Managers have diverse goals, options, and values, and experiences, which reaches to a coalition formation. It holds joint discussions and interpret goals and problems, shared opinions, establish problem priorities, obtain social support for problems. Did you guys get the keyword here? This is the keyword. You make coalition. Do you guys remember the situation where we have some inventory in the three cities and demand in the three cities? Some people will go there, let's get the people and make coalition and agree that we're going to move 200 to Hudaydah. Because based on the understanding of the political tacit information, we can't use management science. So now we are going to use the scavenging model. Let's all agree. So let's get the communication between the people. Do you see? Uh, another example for this co uh, coalition formation from the student experience. You guys remember when the students come to me and they have one piece of paper and everyone signed? That's a sort of a coalition formation. You have a problem in your exam. You go, you get the people, you sign a paper. Let's go and talk. Do you see? That's another way. You have a problem? This is how you solve it. Anyone have used this in their classes? We just did it when you were. Yeah. Sometimes they go together, they go talk to it a lot. Do you see? So that's another, co you know, Carnegie model. You conduct a simple local search. You use established procedures if appropriate. And you create a solution if needed. 
and then you adapt the first alternative that is acceptable to the coalition. So you go, you talk together, the best solution is this, re, uh, take this uh, chapter. Uh, let's retake this final. Uh, let's maybe agree that we will, you know, uh, drop this class. Some sort of a best alternative that everyone agreed. Incremental decision model, it focuses on a structural sequence of activities from discovery to solution. Large decisions are a collection of a small decisions or choices. So what does the incremental say? We've got small decisions. So if we have a big problem, let's take it a step by step, by step by step, by step by step. That's the incremental. Decision interprets, uh, interprets are barriers. Identif identification phase, development phase, selection phase, and dynamic factors. So here, you go through each one of these step by step. And uh, that's how you make the incremental decision model. Problem identification and problem solution. Combining the incremental with the CAR engine. So you can get problem identification where problem identification is uncertain, CAR engine model applied. So if you don't know what is the problem, it's good that you get with other people and agree. And political social process is needed. Here you need to be political. Do you guys remember when we talked about power? So in order to make this decision making where it's more Karanji model, you need to have power. Do you guys remember how to get power? And then you build a coalition. So you build a group. Who's the most uh, uh, student here on campus who always get co you know, coalitions? You know, in every class, there are always the people who say, hey, let's go and do this. You mean active? It's active in terms of, you know, uh, you know taking pro uh, student problems and making it, you know, a building a coalition. They seek agreement, and they resolve the conflicts about goals and problem priorities. Do you guys remember on campus you have problems or troubles? Like Osama? Yeah, has got the authority to do that to see a student center manager. Now here, problem solutions. When the problem solution is uncertain, incremental decision. So sometimes if you don't know what is the solution for this problem, the best way to do it is step by step. Anyone in your projects, you had a problem? Any problems in your projects? No problems? Okay. Now, sometimes if you have a problem and you don't know what is the solution, the advice here to take the increment. Take it step by step, step by step. So you fix each one. Incremental trial and error process. So you try. This works? No. Try this one. Works? No. Solving big problems is a little, in little steps. And recycle and try again when blocked. So that's... Now we have the garbage can. You guys remember the garbage can? The garbage can is when you don't know the problem, you don't know the solution. You couldn't understand what is the problem. Okay? So you try things. Okay, you know, pattern of flow of multiple decisions. You think of the whole organization. You explain decision making in high uncertainty, organized anarchy. And it is problematic preferences, unclear, poorly understood technologies, and turnover. Paul, 